This guy is having a call. He is run over by 50 ton snow removing truck but unexpectedly after such a serious car accident, he is unscathed. There is not even a trace of scratches on his body but only a few holes in his clothes. This is a miracle in the history of medicine. Just a few days ago, Magna's family has moved to a small town in Norway. An old grandpa's vehicle breaks down in front of them. Magna immediately gets out of the car to help him. All this is seen by a mysterious old lady. She steps forward and touches Magna's forehead. A magical light suddenly appears in his eyes and is accompanied by a flash of lightning. The guy looks senseless. He gets back in the car and wants to roll down the window but he has pulled off the handle. At this time, Magna says, I think it will rain soon. The mother doesn't believe him because there are no clouds in the sky, how can it rain? When she hasn't finished saying. Coming to school seeing a classmate's bicycle tire has been bent by the school bully, nameless Magna thinks he can fix it. Finally. In class, the eyes with high myopia since the third grade are miraculously better. Magna is an introverted and withdrawn guy and he also has dyslexia. The mother comes to the principal's office to explain the situation to the principal but Magna keeps looking at the glass. He has a premonition that the glass will be shattered in five seconds. Five seconds later. Because of Magna character, his classmates exclude him but only Azolda is willing to let him be her desk mate because in others' eyes, Azolda is also a freak. She devotes herself to environmental protection and can't extricate herself, often makes comments on her website about the largest local resource development company, says they have been fooling the eyes of everyone, the pollution level in the town has exceeded everyone's imagination. Magna and Isolde quickly become good friends. On this day, they go to the top of the mountain to play paragliding together but when they haven't come to the destination, Magna suddenly receives a message that says his mother has an accident. Magna has no choice but hurriedly going down the mountain to come home but when he sees his mother, she is completely fine. It turns out that everything is a joke of his brother. At this time, a man in a suit appears on the mountain. He takes off his suit, comes on the cliff naked. Seeing the elks under the mountain, he begins to chant the spell. His body mutates in an instant, an elk is also knocked down. When Magna gets back, he sees Isolde has already rushed down on a paraglider. When he hasn't felt happy yet, Isolde's paraglider seems to be out of control and bumps into high tension lines nearby. Magna rushes over to check. Isolde has lost her breath. However, Azolda's paragliding skills are top-notch, it's impossible to make such a small mistake. At this moment, a luxury car stops and a man gets out of the car. It's the mutant man on the top of the mountain just now and also Vidar, the boss of the largest local company. Magna who just lost his friend walks down the street desperately. He thinks Azolda's death is not that simple. He picks up a hammer. Magna is washing his face. He looks up and shocks himself but when looking again, he is like this. Magna can't believe in his eyes. What he doesn't know is that he has gained Thor's power. After he threw the hammer to the sky yesterday, suddenly flashes of lightning appeared in the sky. What kind of fearful power is this? Vidar finds Magna's mother the next day. He takes out his phone and asks who was the bastard smashed his car with the hammer. Enlarging the photo to see, isn't this her family's hammer? She comes home and questions Magna, why did you smash someone's car? Didn't you play enough when you were young? Do you want your mother to work at his company? Magna can't believe this. How could the hammer go so far? He opens the map and measures. The distance is more than 1,500 meters. The current world record holder is no more than 80 meters. On the other side, Azolda's death is treated as an accident but only Magna knows Azolda's paragliding skills are top-notch. It was impossible that she knew there were high tension lines ahead but still rushed forward. Obviously before getting on the paraglider, Azolda was already dead. Magna keeps thinking that Azolda's death has a connection with Vidar. He goes to the worship where Azolda's accident happened but unexpectedly, Vidar is already here. He seems to be looking for something. After seeing Magna, he quickly hides. The next day, Magna's family attends Azolda's funeral but after coming home, there is already a mess inside but strangely nothing is missing, it seems that someone was finding something. The brother finds the tramp at the door, forces him to tell the truth. A few hours ago, a luxury car parked here, there was also a fierce dog inside. Isn't he Vidar? What did he find at his house? Magna suddenly remembers after Isolde died, her phone hasn't been found yet. Can it be that Vidar thinks he picked it up? Can it be that there are hidden secrets on the phone? Just like that, Magna is watched by Vidar. He intends to find the right time to kill Magna but when the plan hasn't come, Magna is hit by snow removing truck. Vidar returns home happily, claims that Magna has died in an accident. However, in the hospital, Magna sits very healthily. After such a bump, Magna's hearing ability and sense of smell seem to be developed. Just by smelling Azolda's clothes, he knows that besides human blood, there is animal blood. 
an old lady hand touches the guy's forehead, a strange light suddenly appears in the man's eyes and is accompanied by a flash of lightning. He comes to the mountain, faces the thick big tree. Just after a while, the big tree crashes down. The running speed reaches 6.98 seconds amazingly. Magna's principal is Vidar's wife. He asks his wife to invite Magna to their house as a guest and persuades Magna to drink magic wine. Magna's nature is kindled, he dances on the table, no one knows what he is dancing. Is this the legendary dance of Thor? Besides showing up to the principal, he also shows his supernatural power. He offers to wrestle with the principal but unexpectedly, when they start, Magna feels something is wrong. How can the power of an ordinary person be stronger than him? The principal also feels that Magna is not a normal person. Before generating power, Magna suddenly notices that the principal's hand has changed. Raising head and looking at her face, Magna almost spits out. When he is distracted, the principal suddenly exerts her power. The table is broken. After returning home, Magna begins to reel all kinds of ancient books and records, wants to find out what wine he drank last night. That wine comes from a Norse myth. As he continues reading, he sees a sorceress giving a warrior magic eyes like the old lady who touched his head that day. Magna quickly finds that old lady. She no longer hides anymore. It turns out that Magna is the legendary Thor and Vidar's family is the giant's clan fighting against the gods. Vidar's company controls the economic lifeline of the entire town. Their company discharges a lot of toxic substances into the town but the whole town depends on Vidar's company, they can only turn a blind eye. The old lady gave Magna magic eyes because of his kindness. She wants Magna to stand up and fight the giant's clan. The school holds a camping party. Vidar calls Magna aside, prepares to test Magna again with the god's language. Are you a giant or Thor? Magna doesn't expect that he can understand. He hits Vidar back decisively. At this moment, Vidar is finally clear whether Magna is an enemy or a friend. To get rid of the trouble Magna, Vidar sends out the hell dog that has been raised for 3000 years. Will Magna be killed? Let's talk about it next time. This is a savage movie. If you like it, follow me.